moment. Oh, Darian has been completely baited into that one. They're just taking everything from SK. 12 to 0 in kills. Not a single wow. reply from SK Gaming. And it's a 20 minute surrender, ladies and gentlemen. All right, gonna get that one legendary now at 8 0 1. They're just gonna bully their way in onto the turret. I have no idea where Copenhagen Wolves have found this level of performance. This time, they made absolutely the right call. It's a perfect Super Week, ladies and gentlemen, for Fnatic. It's the 4 0 dream. Welcome to week eight of the European LCS, live from our studios in Cologne, Germany. I am, of course, Lee D-Man Smith, and here with me is Martin Deficio Linger once again as we prepare for the next four weeks of the summer split. And we saw the standings at the top of the table get even closer last week as the teams battled it out. And with the playoff spots on the line, we'll definitely be looking for some more changes this week. Absolutely. So here is the current table after our 16 matches last week. Up at the top of the table, well, it's Alliance. They are still in the lead despite a 2-2 two two Super Week. And they are now 14 wins and 4 losses. Three games behind them is now a tie for second place as Fnatic and SK Gaming both have 11 wins and 7 losses. And in 4th place at 10 and 8 we have the Super Hot Crew followed by Millennium in 5th place with 9 wins and 9 losses. And of course we'll be bringing you 4 matches today as we start the week with Rocket versus SK Gaming and then the Copenhagen Wolves versus Gambit. And then the two big games of the day is Super Hot Crew will face Fnatic and Millennium will square off against the Lions. And immediately following today's LCS matches will be the European Challenger Series quarterfinals as H2K Gaming take on GG called Nash. So this week's LCS will be played on the 4.11 patch and obviously you've all seen the patch notes and been playing it all last week but here are a couple of things that we feel will be relevant in the LCS matches. First up are the changes to Jax and Kale. Yeah, so Jax's base health, health per level and armor per level has been reduced and is a very big hit to his tankiness and I think it's going to mean we're going to see him a lot less this week than we normally do. And then we have Kale, her AP ratio on her Righteous Fury, her ranged order attacks where she slaps you across the face has gone down to 0 0.2 and now her ult also has 20 seconds longer cooldown and it simply means Kale, I mean she's no longer going to be as dominant and she's a lot easier now to play around and try and outplay. Oh, it's going to open up the picks and bands a little bit. Next up of course there were a couple of changes to the jungle which may introduce some variety for the teams. Yeah so Maokai had a lot of changes here. He's a twisted advance which is his W to gap closer. There's now a shorter range but instead actually just magic Oh, it does health percentage damage as, as the damage of it, and it's very, very strong late game against tanks. And we also have the sapling toss. It now slows by 50% for one second, if you actually manage to get the explosion from the sapling mm. onto the target, but it does less damage than before. And his ulti now, the big deal, it follows him around in fights. You don't just place it on the ground, you are actually activate it and walk around with the ulti. So it's very, very good in team fights, but his jungle speed might be an issue, and we need to see if he can handle Lee Sin, Elise, and these early ganks here, and what's going to happen if the teams actually want to play him. And we do also have a new jungle item called the Quill Coat, and it builds from Hunter's Machete and Cloth Armor. We'll give you 20 armor, we'll give you some health regen and some mana regen while you are in combat with monsters or like jungle camps or dragons. It's, an, it's a very good item for like a Mumu. Maokai, of course, fits in perfectly here, and also builds into the new spirit of the Ancient Golem instead of the old side with the Spirit Stone. So we'll see whether we get some changes in the teams, the picks and bands, the items. We'll have to keep our eye on that throughout the next two days. Remember, of course, that you can find all of the stats for all of the players and the teams, as well as the schedule information, recaps, and much more at lolesports.com. You can also let us know which team you think will win each of today's matches. Just click on Schedule and give a thumbs up to your choice. You can also find out how to join us here in the studio to watch this team play in person. Just click on Tickets at the top of the page for all of the details. And while you're there, check out the VOD tab showcasing the brand new spoiler-free section where you can watch past matches from across all of the regions in the league. Yeah, fantastic. You can get all the VODs all in one place now. So we'd like you guys at home to hop on Twitter and tell us this 
how to answer this question. Which European LCS pro would you like to duo queue with and why? Now, you've played with a lot of them. Uh, yeah, a lot of them. I would say if you play with some of the AD carries as support, Reckless always try hard in solo queue, <laughs> so it's pretty easy to win games You with should them. always try hard. Of course, what do you always mean? try hard. Everybody at home should be doing that. Don't play with Kerb. He will play <laughs> random things all the time. But of course, we want to hear your answers, so send them to us at lolesports.com and use the hashtag LCS so that we can highlight a few of your answers later in the show. So let's get our first game underway as Rockout will be taking on SK Gaming. Now, these teams, they currently have a head-to-head -head of 2-0 oh in favor of SK Gaming. However, last week, Rockout managed to pick up another three wins. While they are far from being flashy victories, they were wins nonetheless, and it takes them to seven wins in ten games, with their only loss last week being to Fnatic. And it was the game where Soas, you played Zix up in the top lane, and I don't think Rocket expected it, because they fell very far behind and ended up losing pretty much all the objectives. I mean, Fnatic picked up five or four out of five Dragons in the game, and it's been an issue for Rocket before, because they need to get ahead early on and then slowly just control the game in their own pace. Otherwise, they won't do anything. They won't fight for any objectives if they fall behind. I mean, if you look at Dragons for them, 30 Dragons in the ULCS, second worst. Compared to Fnatic, who's the best team in Europe, picked up 50 Dragons. I mean, there's a big difference here. One thing, however, they do well, 14 first spots. As a team, the most in EOS is, and Yangus, he picked up eight of them for himself. So he's definitely doing a very good job knowing where to gank and when to gank early on. Well, SK Gaming will be looking to get back to winning ways as they only managed a two wins during Super Week themselves and are now tied in the table with Fnatic, their old rivals. During that Super Week, of course, some serious cracks appeared in the armor of SK Gaming's early, mid and late game as they got picked apart by Alliance and the Super Hot crew. Yeah, so they managed to beat the lowest ranked teams, Gambit and Copenhagen Wolves. But against Alliance and against the Super Hawker, the close competitors in the league, they just couldn't do anything. And it's the same issue as before. Very weak early game. I mean, they're the team actually picking up the least first spots in the LCS against now Rocket, who picks up the most. So we need to see what's going to happen early on in this game here. And Candy Panda, he said last week, they don't really pick for the lane. They pick for the mid game and for the team fight, the synergy as a team here. And yet, if you look at the picks they had in the games they lost, I mean, Renekton, Oriana, Caitlyn against Alliance, and they had Yorick, Kale, and Ash Syrah against Super Hawk Crew. They're all very strong laners, and you are expected to win your lane, yet they don't. So they still have some issues. They do know how to close games, however. So once they get the lead, they can close it out very, very fast and have the fastest average game length in EULCS. Yeah, fantastic. We'll see how it works out between these teams. Of course, SK Gaming is coming into this match with their guard up after facing Rockat's unusual style in scrims. But Zazas, he's confident his team can topple what he thinks is a predictable opponent. I think Rocket plays different from scrims to LCS, like a lot. In scrims we like always lose against them because they do so weird shit and then in LCS they play is like so different. But not that scary in LCS at least. They always make fight but they're in better position and they know how to create those situations. So if you don't give them away a lot of objectives, I think you can beat them. Um, I think right now they're playing just to not lose and they're not playing to win. So I think that's our biggest weakness. If we can just play standard and then we will win. I can pretty much predict how they will play or what they will pick. I know before the game what their picks will be. Fred is always playing pretty much bully top lane early on, like Renek and Atrox are his favorite champions. Uh, Svenskeren doesn't gank top, only uh, he focuses on the bottom lane pretty much and Hipster J is just playing some never assassin, just some farm heavy champions like Orianna, he played Nidal or Zix. That's how they play yeah, every single match almost. We might do the same kind of uh, way that we won last time against them, uh, the more secure way. Yeah, we like to pick team comps, they do fine in lane, they won't lose the lane but they won't win hard either and then they just fit together in the mid game so then we can make plays around objectives. We as a team were thinking about some crazy strategy against them, like maybe not super crazy, but something new. It's very easy to say what we should do to win versus them, but it's so hard to do it in the game, actually. So saying something and doing it is just two different things. I think Zazas hits the nail on the head there for 
every up-and-coming team yep. trying to get into the LCS, it's very easy to see something, to watch OGN, watch any of the top teams in the LCS and say, that's how we got to do. But doing it as a team is very I mean, hard. Everyone, when we watch football, when we watch LCS, we're always yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I could do it. Yeah, Everybody is. A, I will do this better than you. Everybody's 100%. a football expert right now. Of course. Of course they are. Everybody, especially here in Germany. Trust me, <laughs> it's a problem. Let's check out the starting lineups for the team. So over on the blue side, it is Rocket. That means, of course, Zazas is in the top lane. Jankos in the jungle. Overpower in the mid lane. Saliva is the AD carry. And Vanda in support. And on the red side, we have SK Gaming with Freddy in the top lane, Svenskan in the jungle, Jesus as the mid laner, Candy Pan as the AD carry, and of course, in Raided on support. So before the picks and bans begin, let's check out your predictions on LOLEsports.com. For this match, it looks like you voted for SK Gaming by 62%. Huh. That's slipped a little bit more. I mean, you think of, obviously, Rocket now on a bit of a win streak. SK struggled with Super Week. Yeah. That's definitely changed the votes a bit. I mean, a few weeks ago, it would have been probably an 85% yeah, for SK yeah. Gaming. They were big favorites then. But yeah, Rocket, they look better. They keep talking about how they don't like their own performance yet. They have a lot of issues to sort. And yes, when we watch the games, there are a lot of mistakes. But if they do get to play their own play style, slow paced, they will actually win the game. So we have to give them some credit. Yeah, it's something we need to remember with Rockat is the fact they did finish third in the playoffs yeah. last season. They finished third in the spring split, of course. They are a very good team. You know, if they can get themselves back together, they struggled with the meta shift. That was what the main mm -hmm. problem was, it seems. Picks and bands coming up. Remember, this is now 4.11. We'll see how this affects the new pick and bands. Aatrox taken away. We heard Zazas talking about how predictable SK were, how predictable Freddy was in that top lane, and they're immediately targeting with that Aatrox ban. Twisted Fate, kind of a standard ban these days. Uh -huh. One of the main champions in the mid lane. And now let's start to focus. Jez is another champion they talked about, Oriana being taken away. So we have a lot of changes to mid laners lately. I mean, Zix and Yasuo could touch a little bit in this patch here. But TF and Oriana stay the same, so they become even stronger now. Therefore, they're going to be banned away. And the Aatrox has been a ban against Freddy a lot of times in the last few weeks. And it's been his safe pick up in his top lane where he would always do well. So, with Evelyn banned out, do we think this could potentially be Lee a first pick Lee Sin, yeah, yeah. for Rock Out? We'll see how it works out. SK, of course, as we mentioned, Kale changed in 4.11, so may not even get in through the bands yet. Exactly. A oh. Zerath ban. Oh. That's definitely a first ban, for sure. Was first picked, of course, by Overpower just last week during the Super Week, and Rock Out seemed pretty happy with that one, and sure enough, they lock in Lee Sin. Yeah, so Lee Sin, again, a bit like with the mid laners, he's untouched, therefore he's still very, very strong, maybe even stronger, because some of the junglers, with Elise now, with the changes to Spirit of Dancing Golem, you don't, no longer give tenacity, gives it less HP early on as well. Some people might not favor Elise, or at least you have to play her differently, you have to play her more aggressive. So we need to see what SK Gaming wants to play against this Lee Sin. So this is something that has been developing. Syndra in the mid lane. Everybody now plays this. This mm -hmm. is the number two I would say go to. Number one is probably Twisted Fate these days. Number two, everybody picks on Syndra. So with the changes to Athens, where it gives less magic or mana magic resist, sorry, which happened in 4.10, Syndra got even stronger. And now as well, with Mikhail's being more expensive, you can land a stun, there's less chance of the enemy support to have Mikhail, so then cleanse the stun, so you can set up kills very easily. And she's just she's a lane bully. She scales well into mid-game where she can start blowing up people. Her only issue is team fight-wise, it can be very hard to position properly, because you are very squishy, you're very mobile, so it's easy for people to target you and lock you down. We need to see though with Jesses, normally he plays the very safe champions, now he's playing a bit more aggressive, if he can actually make some plays here, because Syndra is very hard to play properly. We should also mention Morgana, of course, was locked in and rated. Pretty much the number one support, maybe we'll see whether Thresh gets picked by Vander, is one of his go-tos. Rockat currently flicking between couple of champions, but Gragas and Lucian were the final selections. Wasn't sure, we've seen Corky a number of times from Silver last week, worked very well for him, but it seems it will be Lucian. And again, this is Gragas in the top lane, which has become very popular over in Korea, over in North America, yeah. and now we're starting to see it leak into Europe. Should be in the top lane here at least. Very safe pick all around. We can talk a little bit, a little bit about it in the game. But I actually just quickly want to talk about the Morgana. It works so well with Syndra because the Black Shield means you can move freely around in these team fights here. So it's a very good combo already from SK with the first two picks. And now follow up with even more damage. Yeah, well, we see Elise. It's kind of a fallback champion for Svenska and would have wanted the Elise in, in there. But Candy Panda on Cogmore. He was up against it twice last week. Didn't work out very well for him this time. He's got himself. Just overall, such a good pick still. I wouldn't say perm banned in OGN, but banned in many of the games and otherwise picked if open. And 
Because you can build Trinity Force and Blade of the Rune King and you were completely untouched by the Bloodthirst on Earth, you just stayed up there as one of the best AD carries and you do well in the laning phase, your mid game is even fine now and your late game of course is absolutely fantastic. So Candy Panda, looking to scale up to the late game, just as can, follow him up there and you can just blow up a target. We'll win, see whether Rocker do lock in. Nami of course, risen to popularity over the last couple of weeks here in Europe. Very confident champion. Vanda has played in a number of times, but more importantly, oh, too. it's the Fizz in the mid lane. That's actually quite crucial, because the Fizz against Syndra, if he gets in close, he could mm -hmm. cause some serious, serious problems for Jezus. So he needs to be careful at first, because there's a lot of poke coming in from Jezus early on here, and if he gets too low, once he jumps in, Jezus will be able to just instantly kill him. However, there's outplay potential here from Overpower. We need to see how he wants to actually play the lane. I would expect him to start Flask and just trying to sustain in the start. Get a few levels and then maybe try and go aggressive if someone like Yankos joins in with Lee Sen. Well, final yeah, choice here. is Yorick. And we knew he was back. We knew he was back. We saw him last week, of course. He made an appearance. Yorick versus Gragas in that top lane. It could be a riveting one, ladies and gentlemen. And it fits so well in this comp again. You have Morgana of the Black Shield to protect your two carries, or you choose one of them. Whoever actually goes down, Yorick is there. So either Jesses or Candy Panda just gets the ulti form from Freddy here, comes back to life, can once again be a pain in a certain place for Rocket. And overall, the SK Gaming comp here, going into team fights, it's gonna be very, very hard to deal with for Rocket. And they're looking more actually to find some picks, especially with the Fist, maybe start split pushing a little bit. I don't think a Yorick late game can actually hold the Fist here. I might be wrong, because Yorick, of course, can use all of them himself and might be able to punish Fist, but Fist late game is very scary to deal with in split push because he can burst you down so fast. Yeah, we saw Freddy, of course, playing it last week against the Super Hawk crew. It was a game they lost. Yeah, with long, Yorick, long game. But again, they've been playing it very differently. So has different builds to Freddy. We'll see how it works out this week. So champions are locked in. Which team do you think has an advantage? Tweet us, hashtag Rockwin or hashtag SKWin to at LOL Esports, and we'll see if the lineups have changed your mind. Remember, it was a vote towards SK at the start. Only 62%, mm -hmm. though, so we'll see if it sways your opinions. We have two very strong solo laners for SK Gaming here. Yorick is actually meant to beat Gragas up in his top lane, because he can just harass him out, and Gragas won't be able to out-sustain Yorick, which we normally see Gragas can do. So SK Gaming should be winning the solo laners early on here. Well, we'll see if they can. Of course, Rocket, they have to generally get ahead to win. SK Gaming generally have a weak lane phase. Let's see how it works out, ladies and gentlemen. Game one of week eight is underway. Rocket starting out as the blue team up against SK Gaming as the red team starting on 4.11. And for Rocket here, if they do manage to get a very nice ult from Overpower, if they manage to land a bubble from Vander, maybe Sasus with his ulti, there's a lot of ways for him to start fights here against a mobile team from SK Gaming, because Candy Panda, no jumps. Jesse's no jumps, of course. Freddy, no jumps. I mean, they can land their ultis on pretty much every one of these and try and set it up pretty easily. So we could see Rocket, if they do manage to get the engage in fights, just instantly kill the first target, force the ulti from Freddy, and then kill it once again. And they already have like the edge going, but it's gonna be a tricky one. Always annoying to play against Yorick. Always annoying to play against the Black Shield. Especially against two damage dealers in Jesus and Candy Panda, who will be able to destroy you very fast. And of course we can see that Crystalline Flask being picked up by both Freddy and Overpower keeping themselves sustained in the lane. And also, you know, with the changes 4.11 brought, of course, it did extend the lane experience. He's gone from what, yeah. 1250 to 1400, which uh -huh. effectively means 2v1s are kind of off the books again now. Yeah, and also with tower changes, they do more damage now. You only need two shots from the tower to be to 75% extra tower damage, which means it's very, very hard to dive, especially early on when you're not really very tanky. And it's another hit to lane swap. So standard lanes is probably going to be the normal thing unless you have a very, very bad matchup, then you might still swap around. And of course, the dragon is still very important. And you don't really want to swap off the top lane and risk giving the Dragon over to the enemy team. Yeah, and there was changes, of course. Yeah, Dragon, 4.10. Of course, uh, a number of changes in the 4.11 patch. Freeze, feel free to Google that, but on a separate screen. Don't switch away from the stream right now, because this game is underway. Bottom lane, this is where we're interested to see how this focus is going to go. Cogmo are expected to be a little bit weaker until around about 4 level 5. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Lucian is very, very strong early on, and with Nami, who puts the E onto him, he can trade really well. You have sustain as well from Nami. You don't have it from Morgana. So definitely in favor of Rocket here. 
2v2 in the lane. And also, you can max your W on Nami, use it on Morgana when she black shields, and it will actually break the black shield, and therefore you can land the bubble afterwards. But you need to get at least a few levels into your W first. You can see, of course, Vanda there poking around, using exactly that double, which I'll give you the exact name for, because you guys at home might love that one. It is the ebb and flow of. Beautiful so, Absolutely. Ooh. That is going to be crucial. The Aqua Prism just coming out of Vanda. If Candy Panda gets caught, which he did against Alliance last week, Nif managed to catch him in that bubble. That was the first blood that came in there. He's got to be very, very careful this week. Pretty much for the entire game, he needs to be careful. Because again, we talked about it just before. Lee Sin wants to get to him and kick him back. Gragas wants to ult him back to the team. You want to land the bubble. Fizz wants to jump him. I mean, everyone wants to go towards him. And Yanka's here going towards Svenskorn. And again, you talk about the Lee Sin kick, it's another thing that caught him last week. Yeah. We are seeing Svenskorn though, getting caught out. Yankos, trouble in his own jungle here. Syndra does manage to actually knock him away from Svenskorn. Overpower comes around, he fancies putting some damage back on this one. It's a good return and it forces the flash from Svenskorn. And we didn't actually notice this before, but Overpower is running Teleport, so no Ignite. One Fizz here. Instead, he's looking more to use the double teleport with Sasus to play the global game. Split pushing around here, use the teleports to create an advantage, and then punish SK Gaming if someone moves down to try and stop him from split pushing. Because there's only one teleport on the side of SK Gaming, and that's unpretty. Well, with both flashes burned for the junglers, who does that punish the most between Yankos and Smashgun? Obviously, both have you got the repel, the kick, everybody's got their own gap closed there. Really depends on how aggressive you want to play the ganks. If you usually pull in as a least to start the gank, it's very, very risky now without the flash, because if Yankos is there to counter gank, there's no way for you to get out. Listen, a bit more mobility, he's jumping around, can use the Q to engage and then save W in case you want to back out of the fight. So it should be in favor of Yankos here. And we can actually talk about Elise a little bit, because Spirit of the Ancient Golem changed, no tenacity, gives less HP early on as well, gives more late game because you now get bonus HP, 25%. So I actually expect Svenskorn to go Spectral Rave and focus more on some AP early on, be very aggressive, maybe even Moby Boots and just gang around. It means team fights are going to be a bit harder for him because he's going to be very squishy in the start. But as long as he plays them properly, he can get a lot of damage off. And Yankus, just looking top lane, nothing happening. Oh, Aqua Prison blocked out nicely by that Black Shield. That point it does land from Enrated, stop Salavar attacking, but Candy Panda taking very low. Hell, heal was used in that exchange as well, so he's back. backing off to base. That's going to give Salavar some chance. You can see he's immediately trying to shove that wave back onto the tower. Yeah, so getting this wave to the tower, as long as Enrated won't be able to freeze it just outside, he should make sure to push it all the way in, deny some farm from Candy Panda. And we actually do see them push it all the way in here, so very nice. Not even going to recall himself. Probably farming up maybe for BF Sword for Salivo here. Yeah, let's we'll see if he's going to rush in towards that one. We'll see how it works out, of course, because these Lucian and now players have been going very differently. He is going to back off. Let's see how he builds it. We can see Candy Panda, of course, going towards a Vampiric Scepter early on. It's another Vamp Scepter for Salivo. I wonder if they're both going to go play the Rune King here. Yeah, so either, I mean, we're gonna see Blade the Rune King as first item for Celebar. Candy Panda can maybe still go towards Trinity Force and just delay it a little bit, get the early lifesteal, but he could also go towards Blade as the first item, making it a little bit more squishy. But we'll still have a lot of damage in these fights here with the 8% on hit, of course, from Blade the Rune King. So let's talk about CS records for a moment, because of course Overpower is in this mid lane. Jesus, do you think he fancies maybe trying to go for something here? Overpower was the person that both Peke and Frog got that record against. Very which true. I'm sure he absolutely he Lulu. despises, by the way. <laughs> of course. He played Lulu both games against Oriana, I believe, and he couldn't actually stop them from farming raves. Even his own raves, they kept taking them away from him. I'm not sure Jesus will be able to do the same. And you actually see both of them farming really well here. Teleport was used by Overpower, so another good thing about the teleport for him. He could take some damage in lane while he farms, go back to base and teleport in on Yankus. Staying around here, here's all onto Jesus. There's the fish thrown out. He flashed in a little bit late there, but he does manage to get away. The stun does not catch on. That's a problem, though. Syndra, of course, fairly immobile. With that flash now burnt, which is exactly what that gang was aimed at. 100%. It does give Rocket an opportunity. And about 75 seconds on ult from overpower, then they can try once again. Jump onto Jesus, put the ult onto him, and try and get a kill. Unless Svenskan is around to help him. Freddy opened his top lane together against Sasus. Is actually winning the lane on farm, like we expected with the Yorick, and just poking away. Both of them might have already used teleport. So we do see very, very standard lanes farming away now because with their lack of lane swaps, we won't really see the early dragons anymore because you're 
You're laning in. Way too risky just one straight down to Dragon. So many people are wrong. Yeah, the 3 minute Dragon or 330 Dragon are seemingly a by bygone here in 4 point level. We'll see, keep our eye on that, how it develops. So, blue buff for overpower, important for him, of course, keep that cooldown and mana ticking up there. Barrels being rolled out from Zazus. And this is a different Gragas from what, of course, we used to see back in Season 3. It is no longer the crazy powerful monster it is, but it's, of course, a very tanky, yeah. annoying monster. But then again, they're both annoying champions in that top lane. So, Gragas normally builds Rod of Ages as his first item. He needs to get some tankiness going because you want to get in the face of people. You want to bonk them in the head with your big barrel, <laughs> with your W, of course. And therefore, you need some tankiness, otherwise you're just going to die pretty much instantly. Unless you want to focus split pushing, you can actually build like Lich Bane into Hourglass and be a split pushing monster. SK though, invading in, no ward on the red buff. So basically just blind checking it. Yeah, I wasn't sure that Sven was looking to uh, maybe get a ward down there. He did move in with Jezus and support Candy Panda exchanging with Celebar. Kalim being used actually. Aqua Prison catches on then rated because he had to use the Black Shield on Candy Panda. Celebar steps to the side, doesn't quite get the damage down, but again, Candy Panda very, very low in this bottom lane. No potions, heal is just about to be ready, so he is going to stay in the lane. Rocket going to push it in once again, and they have full control of this bottom lane. Yes, Candy Panda can pick up some farm, but every time there's a chance for Celebrate to go aggressive, he will. Now, both junglers down this bottom lane here. Yeah, Jankos passes through a ward in the Triburst. They're fully aware of his positioning. They're actually going to try and use the Candy Panda as the bait. You can see Life steals himself up a little bit of health there, while Sven Skirin stays just off the side, unseen so far. We do also see Sven Skirin with the Spirit Stone, so he's going towards Spectral Raid. More aggressive, more AP. Less HP, of course, so he needs to be very fast at hitting all his bursts and then back away, otherwise he will go down. And of course, Selva going to very, oh sorry, Jankos going to very standard. I don't think there's any other option on Lisa. Keep him below there, Freddy getting a belly slam to the face. Zazus, of course, getting that extra goal from the ghouls if he gets the lances on them, so we'll keep our eye on that. It does technically count as a CS count, but as you can see, Freddy. He's quite some way ahead in this top lane now. We need to see Narsus as the hard counter to Yorick again. <laughs> Just farming on the ghouls. Every time getting stacks on his Q. But Gragas, I mean, it's a pick we have seen in Korea for a long time, actually. Also in NA. And now finally the European top laners pick it up. We just need to see if they want to build a little bit different, if they want to go very tangy, want to go a lot of AP. I mean, how exactly they want to build it and what the purpose is going to be for them in teamfights. Because late game, he doesn't actually do too much damage. I mean, he's okay, but he's more utility based. He has the slow, he has the knockback. A lot of CC he brings at least, and a lot of chances to set up ganks or set up kills. Yeah, it's Gragas is something we talked to. We talked to a lot of top laners, of course, last week. We we're saying you guys are going to be playing Zaz. We've seen it so much. Jezus is going to have Earth popping up. He's going to go down. Here's first blood potentially coming in. It's Jankos that takes it. Sven's going trying to counter the Ignite. We'll get him. Overpower trying to turn the damage back around. And Sven Skeren is going to get a bit of poke back there. So, trade mid laner for Jungler. So, Jezus actually managed to get the kill here. Went in favor of him. He will lose all the farm while Overpower can try and push it in against Svensk and We did see the gank. Ulti was ready for Mobile No flash on GSS was used last time. Jumps in, gets the kill with Yankers. But managed to at least trade one for one because Svensk came in. And Mobile dancing around a little bit again. Well, we talked about uh, Rockout, of course, getting the most first bloods in the lane, and they get it once again. Yeah, it's against the team against the SK. Elite. And it's the team that struggles in the lane phase. However, they are ahead in goal right now. Zazas has been back. He's teleported back to the top, so that's down on cooldown right now. And he's going to try and put some pressure on you because he's got himself that catalyst to protect the building up to the Rod of Ages. Zazas happy to take a tower hit. And Freddy is under a bit of pressure. He's got no mana, so he's starting to run out of those ghouls. Freddy is doing the same thing he did last week, where he builds Chalice as the mana region item, and then he builds in towards a Trinity Force. We need to see if he wants to buy it here. Build towards it. No, he's actually going some... Early magic resist against Sasa, so just want to stay and farm in the lane. And build them. Hmm. Pickaxe on a long sword here. Could be towards the tier map, maybe. Mana Mutiny? Don't know which way it's going to go. We'll see. Well, then you would need the tier. It would be very weird well. if you built towards Mana Mutiny now. Be, it would be very weird right now. We'll see where he goes with that build. Of course, he's different from how he did it last week, but he's had a week's worth of experience back on Yorick. As, uh, so as would lovingly refer to it. Every time I see him, I give him grief about that <laughs> one. He's like, why well, you keep picking on Yorick? It is a fantastic champion. My French accent, sorry guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sven Skurin in this mid lane, sweeping out. They have switched across and 
As I was about to mention, that young yep. didn't have one. Candy Panda being blocked out of the Cullen, taking all of the damage generated, blocking off like a good support. But there's a blue invade currently on from SK. Jankus is moving in. Overpower is nearby with ult and flash ready. Flash is up for GS as well. They will actually start it instantly. Jankus here. Wasn't smite it. Didn't smite it actually. Yeah. Svenskan got it. Svenskan got it and rated caught out. Candy Panda Sven rated is gonna get focused. Tevla not quite able to catch him. The heal being used from Candy Panda brings him back to life. Of course, he used the black shield on Candy Panda and quickly became the target. We just see the same thing every time down this bottom lane here. You put the E on to Lucian from Nami, you dash forward and you just go for these trades. And SK Gaming is forced to back away every single time. They didn't die, however, and still farming. Jess is flashing all here from Overpower. Yeah, flash being burnt once again from Jess. We'll keep our eyes on that one. Jankos absolutely will fancy that. But he's just passed the ward, and now they're going for the blue steel themselves, of course. It was just smited away. Jankos is looking to get that one. But Svenskaren's here, ready and waiting. Double buffed up. He's actually moving towards this bottom lane. Jankos just staying around. There's a good ward from SK Gaming up in the tri bush behind the tower to see if Jankos moves in, because in raided without. Any flash, and they're down to 50%. Could be an easy target if Rocket wants to dive onto him. Blue buffs up. Jankos needs some help and support here. Overpower has teleported back to the mid lane. There's the Sonic Wave coming in, so he's ready to just jump in and smite this one away, Jankos. That's why Jezzes is trying to play it risky, but this could become a 4v4 very, very quickly. Blue buff was smited away. Sven Skoren took it in the end there. No, it's oh no, right. It's in the corner. Around. Still. Yeah, he took the last one. See that he manages to get back on this one. You can see full vision of it now. Everybody's backing away. It's going to be SK's. So oh, Rocket gave up so easily. Yeah, though? pretty weird. I mean, they sent four members in to try and stop them at for in the start from doing the blue buff, and then they kind of just give up, back away. Nothing was really invested from SK Gaming except for 10 seconds extra on getting it onto Jesses. So Rocket just put some pressure, back away. Don't actually want to fight because they didn't have any wards around the blue buff, so I didn't really know if they can engage in. It is always very scary against like Morgana and Syndra. One binding or one stun from one of them, the next one follows up, and the target is dead because they are so squishy at this point here. Void ooze down and rated Prince. Tormented soil, every little bit of poke on Sullivan that he can get. So it's going now trying to come in. He has got not got smite available. Overpower jumps towards him. Cocoon lands, but immediately they turn the back damage back around. Overpower with little mana here. No blue buff, of course, on him. Ultimate from Jess is used on Jankos. Kicking it back. Sven Skerin's there. But Vander and Salavar come around the side. And now Jess is in trouble. No flash available for him. Double the buff on Salavar. can catch in the right place. Overpower's going to continue to chase here. The rest of the team will follow through. Jess is simply going to have to stroll away. And Overpower, you feel, in this melee range, will have the advantage. He tries to get on towards him. And Overpower just slides on through. Gets him the kill with the edge strike. But look at the bottom lane here. Two members from SK pushing on to the tower because the dual lane from Rocket moved from the lane up to this mid lane here. And Jesus did a very good job buying time for him to get this bot tower down. So while they lost two members, managed to get a tower, will of course lose his mid tower. So definitely in favor of Rocket and a very good play here. Good aggressive move as well from Celavar and Vander. Yeah, good reaction plays. They knew. At the moment, there was an invade from Svensko, and they were expecting that. It's something Svensko does, does again, yeah. a lot. He does it all the time, goes in for those invades. As is a pop in that barrel there. Those barrels starting to get a bit of punch now, as they can start clearing out that mini wave. Still really need to go back and get his Rod of Ages as soon as Teleport is ready, because he needs to stack it up still. Still delaying a lot of time with it. Four members from Rocket are moving to Dragon. Nobody from SK is even close. So we'll be a Dragon here. Rocket and extending the goal lead. It's going to come in close, not too sure what he's trying to harass there because he didn't have Smite available, the rest of Esco were coming in just trying to delay it, but get Rocket the timer. quick to get on it, gets the timer as you mentioned. But Rocket, they have the advantage, it's what they need to win games and it's working very well for them so far. This is going to be an issue though, Overpower is no way clear unless he can jump on the minions, so SK Gaming just sent multiple That's members in and take down. Well that, that was pretty sloppy from Rock out there, they showed themselves all backing away down the bottom, all went back to base, SK went, well okay, we got four guys in the mid, let's take an advantage and a turret for the Dragon, the mid turret more importantly, not sure that trade was worth it for Rock out, not something they wanted to happen. And Rocket was actually very healthy. I mean, every member was on full HP after the Dragon. It was only Svenskan checking. I mean, they could easily run to the mid lane, clear another wave, and then start recalling. Not everyone at the same time, at least keep Celebar with calling to, client, to try and clear the wave, because SK Gaming it was too easy, as you just said. They just moved in. Okay, only if Fizz is here, you can't clear the wave at all. Easy peasy. Yeah, easy stuff for them. So, 
The game is starting to move on into the mid phase. It's generally where Resco start to get a grip of the game. They are still, as you say, of course, 100 Essence gold. Reaver. And the Essence Reaver. Ah, right, yes. Completely Freddy picking out. Right oh, Dark Finally landing on Sullivan. Stun's going to go through as well. Sullivan just melted on the tower. Such a good pick come from SK Gaming when you have so much single target CC, land one, follow up with the rest, and you're locked down. And you have so much single target burst with the least building AP and a Syndra, of course. Very, very good use of the pick combo here from SK Gaming, pushing on to the tower. And I can't believe I didn't even think about Essence Reaver. <laughs> first time we see it, though. It is the was first time we see it. in 4.11, gives 10 extra at attack damage compared to 4.10. Well, SK Gaming, as I said, moving into the mid game, becomes stronger and then just push on towards the tower. Earth being thrown out there from Overpower, do next to nothing. And this is going to be another mid inner turret going down this time. SK Gaming just turns the cogs, step up the gear, and Rocket has too slow to react. So if you look on the side of Rocket, they have Lucian to wave clear, and they have Gragas to wave clear. But Gragas is stuck in the top lane against Yorick, which means as soon as Selavov was dead, there was no wave clear left, and SK Gaming just stayed, pushed down the tower, took the kill here. Overpower though, looking for something. Rocket going aggressive, Ravzazas comes in there, it's a good call in after Sven Skeren. he goes down, Overpower tries to get in there, the Yorick ultimate used on Sven Skeren. Bubble does not land, the flash is burnt out there. We do see, of course, the scrying all being used to check positions, but no tower gain No candy panda up in top lane, he's running down towards the bottom lane only. Jesses and Raider and Freddy to try to defend this tower and all five members from Rocket here. Risky defensive play from SK, can they keep back away? They have to back off and that will be a tower gained by Rocket. It still puts them at 3-2 behind though. The question is, can they keep pushing this top? Well, they're definitely gonna try here. Svenskan joining in. Can they pan still in this bottom lane here? If they push his way fast enough into this tower, they might try and go for a dive. There's no ulti on Freddy, remember. It's gonna be a 4v5 though, with a lot of crowd control. Jess is, of course, can land a multiple stunt on these. We do see Sven's the Coons dart bindings, everything there. Rocket back away while Candy Panda still pushing that bottom lane. He may be able to get a wave on towards that inner turret if SK can delay them. There's Teleport on Overpower in case he wants to go down and stop the wave. They're still looking for something up here. Oh, Sven is going to be the target, but he repels away from Earth. The wave comes through. Sven Skurin may go down from this one, but he will be the only drop. Will he get to the tower in time? No. Yankos lands the Sonic Wave. Freddy now the target. Zazen turns around, uses the barrel, locks him in there. Yankos comes back around the side, has got the kick available. A good stun comes out from Jezus to keep him at bay. And SK back away while this was all happening. Candy Panda did push that wave, but he had to recall, and rightly so, because because Overpower teleports to the bottom tower. It's a very smart play by Rocket using the two teleports to stay in the jungle of SK looking for fights and as soon as the wave hit there, the bot tower, Overpower just instantly teleported down, picked everything up. So top tower for them and also, I'm not sure if they actually took the red buff, but at least managed to get another kill on SK Gaming as well. Yeah, just did pick up the red buff. It was taken away from them. So Overpower's teleport was burnt out there. He's got a Lich Bane, of course, on him. So he does a lot of damage, pushes a wave towards that bottom turret, but not going to go much further with that one. So this game definitely opening up. Blue buff given across, or taken by Jezzes, in fact, no help required anymore. So let's have a look. Let's take stock of what is happening, because we see some differences in builds. Some of our boss going towards the uh, Ghost Blade and Blade of the Rune King build. Candy Panda has gone towards that trinket okay. course and completed that. Yeah, so you just got the life steal early because you took so much poke in the lane and you couldn't actually afford a Phage or a Sheen, which would be one of the two options for him. Instead, got the trinity force. Now completed going towards Blade of the Rune King. A second where, of course, Selavar wants to go really aggressive here in this mid game with Blade of the Rune King and Ghost Blade. And this Essence, Essence Reaver up in his top lane. So you have Chalice and you have the Essence now to pick up or to get your mana region going. And of course you get some attack damage as well. Most AD carries, we'll still say. It's not worth it to build an AD carry, but on Yorick here we need to see how it works. It is still some gold invested into damage here where he doesn't get any tankiness from it, but it's gonna should be cheaper actually than completing a full Trinity Force, which he did last week. So looking towards the tanky items now from Freddy, and we need to see how much damage he can actually do in these fights. I'm interested that he's gone for a Ninja Tabby as well when there's two ability power champions in there for Rocket. Well, keep in mind, Gragas won't really be hitting him yeah. unless Rocket peels as a team and keep yeah. walking backwards. So he doesn't really care about Sasas at this point. And Overpower, if he's going for, towards the Yorick anyway, he's doing something wrong and it's perfect for SK Gaming. So Ninja Tabby, because he's going to be the guy tanking Selva for the entire team fight, makes a lot of sense. 
SK going for this Dragon Rock out, looking to react as the Incos is nearby. Could try and get in a smite still, and that's what he's doing, but instead he gets locked up. And once you're caught out, you generally don't get away. Oh, he missed. The Ignite is going to help out. Oh, the ultimate from Candy Panda cannot connect, but it does mean SK will get the Dragon. Got the Dragon, forced him away. We saw the same combo again. You have Kuhn, you have Binding, you have the stun from Jezus. So many single target stuns. Of course, Jezus can stun multiple people, but still, lock down one target. Follow it up and try and just get the kill or force them away and take an objective. And now Sasa's down this bottom lane here. Freddy in trouble here. There's four members of Rocket closing in. Freddy was haplessly just keeping Overpower busy. I don't think he realizes. Now he does. Backs away. Four members of Rocket pushing for this third tower. Svenska is nearby to try and help, but it's going to be very hard. For, uh, what have you been saying? Needs one hit. Oh, good job. Overpower takes that one. So, 3-3 three, three in turrets. Of course, Rocket taking all the outers. SK Gaming taking that inner mid turret, which honestly hasn't hampered Rocket too well because look at the vision they've got. They've put the pink boards down. They've covered off their blind spots that they were made available by SK taking that tower down. All the defensive points here from Rocket. They put up pink wards to see if SK wants to go into their jungle and put some wards and then clear them instantly. They have some good control, at least of their own jungle, and we'll be able to spot SK if they want to go towards anything. If it's going to be a blue buff or a red buff, doesn't matter. They will be able to spot the move in. And they've been looking more aggressive than we normally see from Rocket. And I actually like the fact they're looking for these towers. They've even been looking for some picks with their combat overpower on, on this fist here. He's been part of every single kill. DFG now with the Lich Bane. I mean, if you come too close, you die. Well, maybe, you know, maybe confidence has been built up. Veggie, of course, yeah. as we mentioned, is in the house. It's been, what, the third week I think he's been there now. We heard the interview from Overpower during the Super Week. Despite the fact they went 3-1, and one, at the time I think they'd just gone 1-1 one and one maybe, but he was really down on himself. Maybe they've had a bit of confidence building, realizing, you know what, we have won seven games in the last ten. We are doing actually well. We've turned things around in the LCS. We're managing to try and get in towards that top half of the table. Let's see if we can take down SK, who themselves had a rough Super Week. And we also, of course, have a new patch where some teams often feel like, oh, this is our patch now. Things are really working for us in scrims. I saw Vander, he said himself, we've been doing pretty well. We've been winning some scrims here. We're feeling very confident. And it's what they need. And I really like the fact that Van de Evelyn, first big Lee Sin, put full priority on it and now forced Svenska into a bit of a new playstyle on Elise. I mean, we see his build going for early magic damage. We have magic penetration. Now he's building tanky, which is what you need to do so you can actually do something in these fights here. Freddy, though, taking a lot of damage. He popped all oh. already. Overpower going aggressive. The wave comes through, catches on towards him. It's just the ghost that's there, but Rockout move in 3v1. They do put pressure down. Overpower not able to take it, but again, we saw the teleport from Freddy being used there. He's now locked into this lane, and look at the top. Zaza's back in there. The double teleport that Rocket have is going to start causing problems for SK. They will just keep split pushing these lanes here. We see now Zaza's building towards Iceborne Gauntlet as well. So if he gets onto a target in a very long lane here without any towers, he will be able to keep chasing down, keep slowing them. And if it's someone like Candy Panda and he won't be able to kill him in time, it could be big issues for SK Gaming because Candy Panda will be forced to defend one of these side lanes and just try and farm up. His blade is not completed yet, we're almost 26 minutes in. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how exactly Zazas does build his Greyhounds. We've seen a number of different builds across varying players, of course, in fact, almost went full AP damage on one of his uh, a lot of matches ways, against yeah. Samsung. There's a lot of, lot of different ways of playing it. Looks like he's going to be half tanky, half mage, which is generally the standard. Yeah, I mean, we had Rock over in Korea who built Lich Bane Outlast. And he just went into people and then he smacked them in the head and they just died. And it, it worked really well. It's a very aggressive build. So it's also an option, but Rod of Ages is the normal first item. So you get some HP, you get some mana going. And then you just... The thing about Gragas is you need to get in the face of people. Again, you need to body slam into them to get the damage. You need to smack them in the head with the W to get the, the damage. Your Q doesn't do enough anymore. You can't just sit back and poke with Q over and over. You won't be able to kill anyone then. You might get them low, but you won't actually kill them. So he needs to get in the face of people. So he needs some tankiness, and that's what we see from him here. Iceborne Gauntlet makes him a bit of a discount version of Kassadin, where you can just chase slow people and keep chasing with Body Slam and get the slow from Iceborne Gauntlet as well. So it's a bit of a, a Kassadin. I like that term, a discount Kassadin. Yeah, he's a bit fatter too. <laughs> A little bit. Doesn't quite float in the air either. Has a big alcoholic barrel with him. Shushay would be proud of Gragas being back in that top lane. So, Overpower, of course, had that Lich Bane earlier on. He's got his Deathfire Grasp now completed. We'll be looking to exploit him. 
Yeah, and Jesus, on the other hand, could have gone DFG as well. You don't really need it on Syndra. Instead, he went for Outlast because he knows, again, I'm immobile. They might target me. I need this Outlast to survive. And even maybe just to avoid getting kicked back or knocked back by Sasus. So with the Outlast here, if, if it gets popped too early though in fights, he will be an easy target for Rocket to shut down. Well, with the Dragon up in one minute's time, SK are actually making some moves to sweep out the Baron area. See whether they continue. No, the pick one still remains from Rocket. What's in there? Rocket themselves have much better vision than SK Gaming on the map. SK only got one ward down, honestly. Only two now. I can see three. Tell a lie. Can't count. So, because Rocket have been able to push the side lanes and the mid lane for the last few minutes, it means they can get into the jungle of SK, put down the wards. There's no chance for SK to move into the jungle of Rocket because they have to sit back and defend the lanes. Don't want to get caught out of position. So, because Rocket have controlled all the lanes, They've been able to put some wards, and they're basically waiting for this dragon to spawn in about 20 seconds, and then look for a team fight. Yeah, and let's talk about that team fight. Let's talk about who has the power right now, who is looking to try and make this fight, and who's looking to just get a cheeky steal. Well, the thing is, if SK Gaming managed to land either a cocoon or binding or stun from Jesus, they might go for it and just try and blow up the first target. There's not a lot of defense on the side of Rocket here to avoid it, and Rocket, of course, they just want a full-blown team by the way they can get onto these squishy immobile members and just try and destroy them if Opal can come in, kill a Ooh. target, buy some time. He's actually going for Freddy here. This is a problem. Freddy separated from the team and Overpower fans is this one. DFG already used on Freddy. You can see the damage coming in from range. SK collapsing in just off to the left hand side of the screen. Overpower Damn, does go right. down. Freddy turns it back around. And now Rocket in trouble. They're trying to collapse on towards him. He's in County Panam putting the pressure down. Yankos having to run away. He does have Banshee as well, so he should be able to survive. The magic damage shouldn't get locked up. The slow from Zazas. We'll give SK we'll be the Gaming dragon, this dragon, yeah. So Overpower went aggressive onto Freddy. He took the fight and we just saw the power here. Off this Yorick, popped the ult onto, him, onto himself instantly. Won the fight here. And if he can keep doing that throughout the entire game, then it's going to be very hard for Overpower to actually split push. And they need to rely on Sazas then to split push up in a different lane with his teleport. Yeah, let's just face it. That was a straight up 1v1 skill 100%. fight between them. But also a very well farmed Freddy. 283 CS now against the 234 of Overpower. So Overpower couldn't quite take him down. He's got himself the Void Staff after that fight. We'll see whether that helps him out. Pink Ward being cleared out by N-Rated as he moves up. And Rockout actually, they were worried here. You can see the Scrying Orb was used. They were worried that SK were taking Baron straight after it. Really an issue for Overpower. I mean, yes, Yorick has a lot of sustain, but he does have his uh, W to reduce the healing by 50% for at least five seconds. And yet, still couldn't take him down. He was too tangy. Managed to just destroy him, and even if he had died, he just resurrected once again and been able to chase overpower. So we need to see what he can do. Void Staff is definitely going to help against all the magic resist from Freddy here. And we looking forward to next round of the one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, the Spirit Visage was completed by Freddy, so he's got himself another item to compete. You know, he's pretty certain he's going to be up against overpower in the second round of that fight. We'll see how it continues. Last Whisper picked up by Salavar, and that's his third item. Meanwhile, Lady Rune King has now been completed by Candy Panda, who has been chasing, honestly, on Sullivan, not too far behind, pretty close in CS, and of course, just the kills and assists that separate the two so far. Candy Panda, as of yet, has kind of had a, as, as much as involvement as he wants, because he's just going yeah. off farming, getting that cogwall to the late game monster that we all know him to be. Had some issues in the laning phase, and then he just stayed to side lanes and farmed, grouped up around Dragon, picked it up with the rest of SK Gaming, went back to the lanes, kept farming, Trinity Force and Blade, two core items for him here, and uh, also a long sword going towards, again, the late game points. And I did see some uh, math on Reddit about Kog'Maw doesn't actually need Last Whisper, because of the fact he does some magic damage as well, and his W attack speed is a lot better for him, so like a Phantom Dancer instead of a Last Whisper. Want to see if he still wants to build an arrow. 2v1 is unfair. 2v1, that's cheating, that's for sure. Freddy gonna get caught out this time. I don't think he's gonna be able to duel his way out of this one. He will go Man. down eventually. And there we can see Freddy. He's gonna get some more farm though, just before he dies. So unfair here, calling his big brother to help him. Managed to get the kill on Freddy. Yanko's actually staying to push it in with Overpower. Candy Panda going down to try and do defend. SK Gaming couldn't actually push because in the mid lane, Selavar and Sasus were sitting and just clearing the wave instantly. So there's no chance for SK Gaming to push it down. Oh, let's see the Sonic Wave lands. Is he going to go for it? No, nope, Blue Buff giving away 
And that will be going towards Jezza's Rocket moving though. Look at this. Sweep it in. Can they three man this one? Oh, there's a water just on the side. Going to get spotted out. They're not going to start it. Instead, they're just going to keep on pushing. And of course, Overpower's backed off. He's got Teleport available if they want to start they it. They know it. Ah. From the ward. They know it. They can see Celebar hitting the Baron here. They could just perform when he moved in. SK Gaming are moving. Candy Pan is very far away. Teleport is up on Freddy. He can join in. He's a long way away from this one. The Cocoon does not land. Overpower just off of the side there. His ultimate is back available. Rocket quickly peel. The moment they see that ward go down again, that just that one sneaky ward off the side there that N-Rated placed gives them the vision. So it happened when Ping Ward became permanent and you can just place the Ping Ward and keep it there forever. People had to find new ways to have some wards around the area and they just put it around a corner where normally you won't check with either a Ping Ward or a Sweeping Lens. And it actually forces teams now to have two Ping Wards when they do Baron. One inside the pit and one just outside the pit so you can see everything. Which is a bit annoying. And something, something most teams actually don't do. So good trick here by SK. SK trying to get some sneaky picks off the side there, but you can see they were in full vision. There was a ping ward just around the back of the red buff that gave them vision. Rocket, of course, also spotted out by a ward there. So both these teams trying sneaky plays, but not working out. While this is all happening, Freddy is happily working away down his bottom, shoving in the wave. And he's going to be on that turret. He's got a lot of damage to push on towards it. And Rocket. A little bit slow to react. They will be coming in 2v1. Overpuff goes directly aggressive in there. This time around, he is not ganging up. And SK actually moving down in numbers. All of SK back in the jungle. Yankos might catch him out here. Is he going to go towards it? The wave will catch through. Yankos does not fancy going in amongst those four, though. No, they need to get onto the squishy, squishy uh -oh. target in the back. Freddy, though, flashing away. Freddy caught out. Explosive cast being used by Zazas. He flashes away from it. Sonic Wave did land. The fish this time will not do anything. That Black Shield working wonders by N-Rated. It is very hard for Rocket to teamfight unless they get to Candy Panda Jesus and just blow one of them up with Overpower and his DFG here. So SK Gaming managed to back away. Flash was used, however, from Freddy. So at least they got something out of it. A lot of ultimates were used by Rocket there, and SK know it. They saw them all come in, and now they're pushing in. There's no wave, there's no fish, there's no culling, and there's no barrel. Only just the kick available by Yankos and SK trying to push this one in. They want to force Rocket to put themselves into a sticky situation. Sven's gonna fairly low. Freddy almost out of mana. Zaz is in trouble. Zaz's ultimate burn on towards him, but he's very tanky. Sven Skeren's gonna follow through. Yankos comes back in towards him. Meanwhile, overpower off the left hand side of the screen. He's creating a distraction and SK split targeted there not really sure which way to go now Yankos using the kick calling back off the cooldown gets straight on towards it gets himself one gets himself two Freddy caught out around the side he's going down as well he's trying to tank his way through this one the sustain is strong but he will eventually fall to Zazas so while they only had the kick from Yankos it was enough he managed to get behind the team kicked Svenska into Salivar here, who used the calling, took him down, and just moved on here. They're going towards Baron. Yeah, three for one there to Rocket, and they're going to move straight in with the jungler. Svenska now down. There's no smite steel available. Jezus is, of course, up. He could try and maybe get some stun in towards that pit. Candy Panda is alongside him. That's a lot of damage, actually, that they've got to be worried about. They do, of course, have the Aqua oh, Prism, no, which no. catches on Candy Panda. He's, He's in trouble. He's going down. Yankos screams on through on this one. He's going to try and turn it back around. Salivar taken low. See, will he get caught down? Jezus gets locked up. He gets stunned down. He tries to go in towards Vanda. That is not going to do a great deal for you, Jezus. He's going to drop as well. He got himself one kill on Salivar, but it stops the Baron. Stops the Baron. So SK Gaming, with only two members, managed to force them away. We just see the fight again here. Opa went in by himself. Four members, members of SK were forced back. But because Jankos chased onto Svenskan, he kicks him in here. How many people does he get? Everyone except for Candy Panda actually get knocked up in the air. Celebar joins in. Easy kill for him. And Ready going down as well. And SK Gaming, I believe, only managed to get one kill from it. Yep, fantastic stuff overall. SK, no, getting themselves straight back in there. This is going to level out the gold. You see, once that dragon goes down, Rocket, though, they don't care. They're moving straight towards Baron. They're going to try and sweep this one out. They started already. Keep starting this Baron. Celebar is dead for five more seconds. Your AD carry. Jess is on the side of SK, has gone two. But the rest of the members with Candy Panda. Running from base, needs to try and stop this one. Candy Panda won't be able to help for now, so very good call by Rocket. They're aggressive play. A race between cooldowns. All oh, the fish didn't quite land on there. Sven Skaren looking to try and get involved in this one. It's Kabaran's taking very, very Finish nice it. fight rate. He gets taken. Yankos locks it up. SK have to back out. So either, even though the AD carry was gone from Rocket because Candy Panda just spawned from base, they just went straight for his Baron here. It's been the focus for them. Very aggressive moves onto Baron, forcing SK to react, and now, 
very even in gold still. We need to see what's gonna happen. If they wanna go back to split pushing with the double teleport, it's gonna be ready soon for both Sasas and Overpower. Or if they wanna actually try and group up and find a team fight. Well, SK Gaming are currently tied in second position with Fnatic, and of course, it's a match that they're gonna be playing tomorrow, I believe. And honestly, it's a risk for them right now because they were in such a comfortable position in that second place, and right now they're in danger of being caught and passed by the likes of Super Hot Crew Millennium. Everybody's catching up on them. This is no longer the invulnerable SK late game team that we saw back in the spring. It's too easy to play against them early on. You can even do some mistakes or have some or make some mistakes and still come back into the game because they don't punish you as early as they normally would. If you look back to the last split, I mean, they take a bit longer now to close our game, but normally once they get the lead, they are very good. They know how to push the advantage. This game around though, because Rocket has been playing so aggressive, it's been hard for SK Gaming to actually do something. And every time they moved in for fights, Rocket were there to collapse onto them, wanted to team fight Rocket as often as possible and picked up some kills. As long as they get to the squishy targets, they can take them down so fast and will be able to win the fights. And they're actually pushing out now in all the side lines. And uh, did go last Whisper, despite mm -hmm. everybody on Reddit claiming Phantom Dancer is the uh, the thing to go. Of course, all the theory crafters out Just there. have to say, last Whisper might not be the best for Candy Panda in this situation here, but Illusion still needs last Whisper. Absolutely. Just gonna say, it, there was some talk about it, where people were like, ah, no. Never see Last Whisper again on any AD carry, not the case. Of course, it is situational play, and we do see Randy and Zomans being picked up by Yankos. Zazans, of course, is always a tanky target. And speaking of tanky targets, both these junglers trading back and forth, and Ward killing is on mass effect. So, right now in this top lane, let's see what's going to happen in here. Are they going to keep pushing this one? It's in a They work towards it very early on. If you have just joined us, of course, Rocket, you can see I've got that Baron on them now. Had a very good start here. And this game gaming are under pressure as Rocket continue pushing. Meanwhile, down the bottom, Overpower and Freddy in a one on one situation. But Candy Panda should clear this wave out, no problem. Yeah, so Rocket should actually send Sasa somewhere else and have him push a lane so they push all the lanes up towards SK. Overpower down this bottom lane here. Still some issues against Freddy who keeps running after him and poking him. on to be a straight nuisance this time around. He's going for it. Ultimate traded. Freddy will survive. Overpower. I'm gonna bait that one out. Now he fancies it. He wants to go for Freddy at the moment that ultimate cooldown is off. And notice here on the minimap, Sas has now actually moved to this mid lane, which is waiting for his team on the top lane. And Opal once again jumping in. There's no man on Freddy. Does have the chalice, however, so we'll be able to regen some of it up here. But Sas is now pushing this mid lane. Very good move by Rocket, sending him in because he has to teleport now, pushing every single lane. Well, 1-3-1 one, one was the split push that Rockat did so well back in the spring, but Zazas now is looking to try and get on towards Freddy. Explosive Cask is available, and these two have been traded back and forward. Freddy now, zero mana available to him. He can't hold this sustain any much longer. It's the only thing they could change was actually send Zazas top and the rest of the members mid lane, but instead they want to keep Zazas close to this bottom lane so he can help Opan just roam between the two lanes here come in, maybe tower dive him. Gragas will be able to tank the tower. And Opal doesn't need it. He needs only a few hits here, a few seconds. He will actually be able to take down Freddy then. Zaz is making his way back up towards the top. It's going to be a 4v3 if he can get around the sideline. A good explosive casket could knock them out. Freddy in trouble. Overpower strikes. DFG was back off cooldown and went straight for it. Went straight from ult. was ready as well. Zaz is using his ult to force SK away from the tower. But now they're in trouble. No teleport. Nobody to defend his bottom lane here. He's going to push into the inhibitor. That's going to be the one tower. They have down. To back away. They can the tower. Keep going. The second tower will follow. And this Baron, well, it was. Not exactly used too successfully. They get two inner turrets, and that's all they wanted. Yeah, it was perfect here with Overpower. First, he used the ulti in DFG, forced the ulti away from Freddy and all the mana, and then he just stayed around, kept poking onto him over and over. And finally, once the ulti and DFG was ready again, pick up the kill, forced SK to back away from the top tower because, again, who's gonna defend the bot lane? We have to go away, and therefore they lost. We have to back off, and therefore they lost both towers now. Still keeping the inhibitors alive, however, and inhibitor towers. It's still very close across the uh, gold stakes. The main difference between the two junglers, you can see Yankos around about 1,500 gold ahead of Svensko. And other than that, the AD carries, it's about 800 gold, 600 gold in the mid lane, the top lane, just 600 gold back and forth. So very, very even between the two and the supports as well. So at the moment, this game's still teetering on the edge. While it's Rocket that have been on the attack, 
It was purely down to, of course, the Baron that they had. That's going to be back up in two minutes' time. Dragon, though, is up in 15 seconds. And he's going to walk straight into a trap here. And rated it, though. Good black shield there. Sven Skerens, the man that's been caught out. He's going to repel. He's got nowhere to go. Yes, Flash He's going to have to drop straight back in there. Flash is away. A good coverage from the rest of SK. And he gets out of life. Freddy, though, in trouble at the top. Overpower for strikes once again and gets himself another kill. It is so hard to deal with this once you get some items. Yes, early on, Freddy won against him, but now with as soon as the Void Star was completed, actually, he just started winning. And with the Hourglass as well, the armor against Freddy, he's just so strong in these one-on-ones. And therefore, he will be able to uh -oh. kill him. Oh, no, they're going in. Oh, they're going on Jess's oh. explosive cast. Not quite enough. And Rage is going to go down, though. He gets popped by Salomar. Look at Overpower motoring in there. <laughs> teleported on. Jess has ended up knocking him away. But this could be an inhibitor turret going down. No. Minions, though, can defend us here. Sven's going to see it dodges the bubble. Will be the tower for Rocket. Zaz is having to tank this one out. It will go down. He's very tanky indeed. They can move on towards the inhibitor. Candy Panda trying to get the poke on towards Zazas. Dodges out the cool in there. Overpower strikes once again. Sven's Karen, the ultimate being used on him from Freddy as he goes down. You can see Candy Panda caught out. Salomar going in, but he's gone way too deep and he gets traded back and forth. And now over Paolo, Sven Skerin on towards him. He gets the Zonias just at the right moment and Jezus did not get the kill. Jankos instead manages to get himself a he kill. Jezus finally it. gets the kill on towards Overpow towards uh, Zazen, sorry, but Overpow, he got away. Still lost inhibitor here, gave up some kills as well. Things are not looking good for SK Gaming. The fact that Freddy can't do anything against Overpower means SK Gaming are forced to just find a pick. We're just gonna see it again. I believe actually the ulti from Overpower hit onto Candy Panda just in a few seconds. And then Salivar going aggressive, wanna get this kill here. A bit, <laughs> bit uh, over aggressive a little bit by himself. Easy for Jesse to actually manage to pick up the kill. But then they can just keep chasing in. Focus always on inhibitor. Overpower, oh, huge oh. troll. Oh, so, so and close. even the spider backs away. Oh, so unlucky. The spider was moving. I was like, no, never mind. I'm just going to go away and kill him. <laughs> well, SK looking to try and take the dragon here. Yanko's going to try and come in. Smite still it away. He gets it. And now, once everything starts going against you, that is how it goes. And just like that, he sneaks in. Smite steals it away. That's only the second dragon, though, for Rocket. Check out that wall placement, though, back on the Baron. You can see him rated this time. Snook them both in the pit. Blue were picked up by Jezus. So Dragon and the fact that SK Gaming, at least the solo laners, did really well early on. Means the goal still somewhat close. I mean, SK Gaming can still come back here. And now they need to clear both wards. So we have to pink outside and we need to pink inside the Baron Pit as well. If they want to clear everything away and try and force SK to move in and stop them. And then just start the team fight from Rocket's side. Sus can go in with Ulti, Yangus, the Fish as well. You even have Tidal Wave. I mean, multiple options from Rocket to start a fight. So SK, can they be the late game team that they always pride themselves Freddy on being. Freddy looks sad. Overpower. He's got to be careful. He doesn't go a little too deep on this one. It has been something he's done before. He's gone too aggressive, caught himself out, put his team in a dangerous situation. He's actually going to try and push the top wave on SK, keep themselves busy. No, he's thought better of that one as SK made a little move. And it's a little ward dance right now as SK. They want to force a teleport. They want to force teleport away from Sasus. He's down his bottom lane, pushing it. Backing away, no teleport used yet by Sansas. He's keeping it very cool here, waiting to see if SK actually want to stay on the Baron or not. He didn't need to. Scryno went down. They saw SK backing away from it, and of course, you just saw Overpower the screen there off the side. Still pushing that bottom lane. SK going to have to react to this one. They've got two players with teleport. He could quickly get Overpower down the bottom there. Giving up the Baron for an probably. inhibitor may well be worth it, but they're going to start it off. Candy Panda is in that pit, and this is a dangerous time. Candy Panda could get singled out. Instead, Jezus is going to get focused. Zonny's out. Yes, now, Jankos is on him. Overpower comes around the side. That's going to be him going down. And Rady caught out. He gets dropped out now. Then a good turn back on towards Freddy. Freddy goes down, and SK is just getting wiped off the map by Rocket. No problems whatsoever. The game. And they came in from every angle. Often it doesn't work, but this time Rocket played it superbly. Everything went wrong from SK here. They start the Baron and Rocket just collapsed from multiple sides onto them. There was nothing they could do to get out. I mean, Jesse died by himself. Ulti from Freddy was used on Enraided. The support, nothing worked. Easy team fight for Rocket. 
and they deserve this one. So Rocket will be taking victory here, I feel. I don't think they're going to be able to stop this one. We see the 1v5. Towers going down. They want the points, that's for sure. Sven Skoen's got nowhere to repel to. He's just going to get straight drop back down. Oh, oh. Colin does it. And it's going to be actually Overpower that picks up the kill. Rocket will take down SK Gaming and take revenge for the win in week six. Such a good performance. Early on, they try to make a lot of plays. Just an issue around the Dragon here from Rocket. They are again the team with the second lowest amount of Dragons in the league. And we saw it because SK Gaming, they kept even in gold due to the Dragons. But then again, once the team fight started, once the split push really started, where Overpower could actually beat Freddy one on one. Rocket just took full control of the map, got the Baron as well, and SK tried to come back, they tried to force the Baron, force the teleport from Sasus in the end, but it just meant that they got collapsed on from every single side. I mean, when you have so many immobile targets and the team can just flank around you so easily, you can never really team fight. Well, it's now eight wins in 11 games for Rocket. They are absolutely climbing up the table, bowing to Veggie there, the coach you can see at the back there. Obviously, it set something up there that the team absolutely would work with. They said it at the start. SK came in a predictable. They yeah. knew what the picks were going to be. They knew what they were up against. And they played against them superb. So a few surprises. I mean, Syndra from Jesus is a new pick at least. But goes in under his lane bully style. And they had this fist pick ready. Because Opa didn't really think mm. about it. He was like, okay, I'm going to go fist against this. Pick teleport, take flask at level one. Yes, I'm going to take a lot of damage. I will fall behind in farm. But as long as I can impact the map later on and just do somewhat well in the lane, maybe pick up a kill from a gank with Yankers, it's all fine. And we just saw it. He got the Void stuff, he got the Hourglass, and then Freddy couldn't do anything. Well, we've them. seen him playing it before, and of course we've seen Kurt playing it very well. So as a champion, we knew it was always on the cards, and they expected Syndra maybe, who knows? Maybe they just scouted this one out. I mean, it's a very popular pick at the moment, so we're you should always expect Remember, obviously, at the start, they were talking about how they scrimmed against them last week for Super Week. Obviously, we, you generally only go against teams that you're not facing. They seem to figure out exactly what SK were doing, put themselves in trouble. But let's hear from Rocket Zazas, who's on stage with Shocks. Thank you very much, Demon. I'm Ifi Shock Zaporta, indeed joined by the top laner from Rocket here, Zazas. Um, first off, congratulations. Another victory coming in for you guys. Now, in the, um, the video beforehand, you said, well, you know, Freddy always plays bullies. And then he pulls out that annoying Yorick versus your Gragas matchup. So tell me about the lane. Well, it isn't that hard. The Gragas is pretty much lane bully as well, but it's not on the Yorick level, which is pretty much the most annoying champion to play versus. Now he's spamming ghouls and just healing. But it isn't that bad. I had like 20, 30 CS behind, but it's fine because Yorick isn't that good in team fights. Yeah, talk me through those team fights. There was actually one where he was very hard to kill and you guys kind of went for split push more on from that point. So tell me how you played that mid and that end game. Well, it was enough. Uh, we were waiting uh, when the Fist would be able to one versus one Yorick, and from that point they weren't able to send anyone who could kill Fist, and he could just snowball and so on. We were just waiting uh, for uh, Overpo to kill Freddy, and was, that was our plan. Just wait for, for him to get farmed, and that was over. That was your plan, and it did work out, and I did uh, notice at the end you guys bowed to Veggie, of course, your coach. Tell us about that moment. Well, it's like our inner joke uh, that he loves Korean scene. He wants to copy it and so on. And uh, we call him uh, Hyung or something like that. That's some Korean word for uh, the oldest person in the house that we show our respect to him or something like that. <laughs> Well, fantastic. Um, so you guys came into this week. You guys were 3-1 in Super Week, a win here. You guys are never that confident, but you got to get some confidence out of this. Talk me through the matchup we're going to go through tomorrow versus Alliance, also not the easiest. Well, for sure, it's the hardest matchup you can get, but they lost to Manchester last week, so I think we can do it. If we play our game, I think we can win. I like that confidence. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, Joe Quick, Shut and myself will be breaking down this game and the Copenhagen Wolves take on Gambit. Don't go anywhere. Oh, Jankos using the kick, Colin back off cooldown, gets 
straight on towards it, gets himself one, gets himself two. Freddy caught out around the side, he's going down as well. You can see Candy Panda caught out, Salva going in, but he's gone way too deep and he gets traded back and forth. And now over Paolo, Sven's going on towards him. He's just the Zonia's just at the right moment, and Jezus did not get the kill. Zonia's out, yes, now. Jankos is on him. Overpower comes around the side, that's going to be him going down. And Rating caught out, he gets dropped out now. Then he can turn back on towards Freddy, Freddy goes down, and SK is just getting wiped off the map.